Hi YouTubers, I wanted to do a video here about uh, anti-skating in particular as it applies to this Audio-Technica ATP-0120 turntable There have been some reviews on the net um, about the USB version of this and people have pointed out that the anti-skating is terrible and it doesn't work um, and that may be the case on some models but I think it might be dissuading people from buying these turntables and I just wanted to set the record straight to some degree about how it works on this particular model and what I've done here is I've set the tone arm weight at zero so there should be no weight there's a slight tendency for it to lift which is fine because um, I don't want the needle to fall on the mat now anti-skating is essentially what it does is it counteracts the force of the tone arm which wants to pull towards the center of the record as the record is playing. It's a bit confusing because some people tend to think as the record is playing there would be a centrifugal force that would want to push the tone arm outwards. But in fact it's quite the opposite. Ideally what you want is you want the record needle to stay right in the center of the groove. And if it's pulling towards the center, it'll be riding on the inside of the groove and picking up information from that side of the groove more than the outside. If it's pulling towards the outside, it'll be riding on the outside of the groove and getting more information or preferencing the information that's on that side of the groove. So by resting right in the center of the groove, it's free to move backwards and forwards or side to side and pick up information from both sides of the groove which is what the record was intended to do when I release this in the center you can see the tone arm is balanced so it goes up and down um, it's hard to get it absolutely parallel, but when I release it, you can see a very slow movement back towards the tone arm rest here. Now that is anti-skating in action. And that is applying a very, very small amount of anti-skate. You see when it bangs against this, it's quite happy to go back the other way. So the amount is very, very small. Now, when you have this set to zero, theoretically, the tone arm shouldn't move. And that would be an indication of a very finely balanced anti-scape mechanism. That's beyond the capabilities of this turntable, for sure. It does want to move towards this, this side. As you can see, it's at slowly gathering speed. But that doesn't really matter because any record is going to need a degree of anti-skate. And by and large, what people recommend is if you set the weight to two grams, perhaps that's what your cartridge needs. So you could compensate just by not, just by setting it at two, for example, and then you know there'd be a very fractional amount of anti-skate built in on top of that. So if I put that to the center, And then I turn the anti-skating up to say 2. Now you can see it moving back with much more speed. But finally it will continue to pull over to the right where it needs to rest. And if I, for example, turn it up to 4, it should move with a little bit more speed. It's a little bit more pressure pulling this back this way. And there you go. It's quite determined. It wants to get wants to get back there. And if I turn it all the way to seven, which is the highest setting on this. There you go. I can actually feel a little bit of resistance in my finger, not much, but no, perhaps not. Perhaps I'm imagining that. So I would say that the anti-skating works just fine and I don't see any reason to be concerned about it and I certainly wouldn't not buy one of these turntables on the basis of the anti-skating being reviewed 
poorly on the USB version um, but I think it was probably more of a batch from the factory rather than the overall design.